you, you often see pictures of polar bears looking like this. They're lying on the ice or lying on rocks and sort of spread out. And they look very relaxed and chilled, and, but they're actually doing something which is important to actually save their lives. Their fur is so good that even in the coldest extremes, polar bears can actually overheat. The insulation is that good. So they fl flatten, them, flatten themselves out on the ice to make sure they don't overheat. A polar bear is an animal that can be both cold and overheating and sweating all at the same time. That's exactly like a DBA or a developer. The moment after they've done something catastrophic to their database, like drop a table or delete some data, you're both cold and sweating at the same time, which leads us nicely into flashback transaction. Flashback query lets you have these flashback row versions options. And one of the columns that is in there is versions XID. What's versions XID? XID is a term that you may have seen floating around somewhere in the database. And this is where I've seen it in V$ transaction. There's three columns there which have XID as a prefix. Now, if I do a query on those three columns from, for an active transaction, I have XID USN slot and SQN. That stands for undo segment number, slot in the undo. We, remember we said we allocate an undo slot and a sequence number. A transaction, you can actually logically think of a transaction in the database is your ability to allocate some undo. To get, if you can get yourself an undo slot, that lets you start a transaction. You can think of your, your position in the undo segments as being the primary key, for lack of a better term, to an actually transaction record. When I do versions XID in flashback row versions query, well, I get this interesting sort of look. I get, I get a single column, but it looks like 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, F, A, 202, et cetera. If we break it up, you can actually see it maps to those three columns in VDollar transaction. 0, 1 becomes the undo segment number, 1F becomes the slot number, and A202 is maps to 674. The version XID in your row versions queries actually maps to a transaction ID in the VDollar transaction table. That transaction ID is your ability to actually get a slot in the undo header. One of the nice things with that is, is when it comes to using a technology called flashback transaction, is that transaction ID lets you key into that undo information. So we have a view called flashback transaction query. And if you can provide it an XID, you get access to the kind of stuff you would see in the flashback query, the start SCN, the commit SCN, and also a nice column there called undo SQL. So for example, select department name for department where department number equals 10 and the current value is finance. If we want to see what the value was in that row before it was finance, we can get the versions XID from a flashback query. That gives me that value, that hex draw value there of 0, 0,900, et cetera, et cetera. I query flashback transaction query with that and it shows me the undo SQL saying if I wanted to undo the last update that converted that row to finance, this is what it would be. It would be an update setting the department name back to bean counters. That's how I undo the change that made it to finance for that particular row ID. Obviously, we don't have the primary keys in there because by this stage, we're just looking at blocks and rows on, on data. That's what the undo information is. Now, you need to be careful when you're running these queries. If you look at the definition of flashback transaction query, it's actually a layer on top of an X dollar table, a memory structure inside the Oracle database. You never want to query that structure without predicates, and you never want to forget that hex to raw. If you do, you're going to absolutely hose your server because you'll be querying the entire undo memory area, and that's obviously going to be quite large. So this is the good query. You do select star from flashback transaction query where XID equals hex to raw some string. The execution plan shows you that even though it's a memory structure, we have some sort of indexing capability into that memory structure. It's probably a fixed size array so we know where to jump to or like a hash array. If you leave out the hex to raw, then you'll do a table access full effectively on that memory structure. And obviously if you leave out the where clause altogether, you do a table access full on that structure and you will absolutely hose your server. So always query it with hex to raw. But the fact that there's an undo SQL column means that as long as we can query the undo information for a particular transaction, even if that transaction is committed, we should be able to roll it back. And that's what flashback transaction is. It's solving this problem. The three words you never want to issue or utter as a developer are delete, commit, and uh-oh, because something's gone wrong. 
whenever you do this, you sit at your desk and there's just this silence, you know, because you just sit like, you just sort of stare at the computer going, what have I just done? And it's funny how then we do this. Even we know we've just deleted all the rows in the employee table. You always, I'll just jump in and run account just in case. And normally at that point, if you haven't committed, you just do rollback and you've dodged a bullet. But if you've committed, then you're in trouble. And that's where flashback transaction comes in. You can undo a transaction that has already been committed. Flashback transaction uses an API mechanism to actually do that. Here's our version X ID that we got from a flashback, uh, flashback query using flashback row versions. This is the API we use. We use DBMS flashback transaction backout. I want to back out a transaction. So I deleted department number 10 from the employee table. So I call this API and this is your most likely result. Unfortunately, you're probably going to see this mining could not start at which point, unfortunately you get to wave goodbye to your data because it's gone forever. Because one of the critical components that is required before you can undo a committed transaction using DBMS trans flashback is you have to have at least a bare minimums level of supplemental log data on there. So you need to have that statement run. If you haven't run that, then you're not going to get any benefit from transaction backout, unfortunately. But let's assume that we were wise and we'd done this at some stage in the past. You can't just add one now. You need to have done it before your transactions that you deleted your data with. So I've deleted from department, department number 10. I've committed it. So it's gone forever. But I can get the version X ID using a flashback row versions query and there's my versions XID. I now can run DBMS flashback transaction back out because I have that supplemental data on and it says completed. But then when I select staff from the department table, there's that moment of panic again because where's department 10? That's the guy I was trying to resurrect. Where's he gone? Keep calm, no need to panic. The API is doing exactly as it's meant to do. And I think this is actually a really cool implementation. What we do is we create what we call a compensating transaction and it's made available to you here. You can query DBA flashback transaction state for your nominated transaction that you're trying to undo. We give you a compensating transaction. And with that compensating transaction, you can actually get what we call a transaction report. And this is like a preliminary report telling you this is what we're going to do. And this is what I like. It says, to undo your delete, and we can see there in red, I'm going to do an insert into the following table department with the following values. So it's a great preliminary check because one would imagine you're not undoing transactions regularly on your system. Otherwise you've got some, obviously some significant problems in your database. On these rare occasions, it'll say, yep, this is what I'm going to do. Are you sure? And if you're sure, then you can commit. And there you go. Our value comes back into the table department 10. So it's this two stage process where you can actually preview what's going to happen and then finally commit the changes away. So that's pretty good. There are some typical restrictions. If you try to flash back a transaction that occurred and then some DDL has occurred to your table, like you dropped a column or you renamed some columns, you might have some dramas. There were some restrictions if the table had like XML types and, and blobs, uh, it gets better with each current version of the database. So check your documentation for that.